Hi everyone, welcome along. So last week we looked at X functions, okay? And kind of I did quite a short video on X functions. So what I really want to do is kind of start thinking about the next step, really what are X functions about in terms of the key component of an X function, which is the table measure. So I thought what we should do is we should actually look at aggregations this week, which is kind of a halfway house. So it's kind of like the two videos and it'll all come together. So aggregations are something that you, you really do need to do, and especially for us where we've got the New York bike data now. So the New York bike data has around um, 160 million rows, and we're running it in a direct query mode. So what effectively that means for our model is that our model is actually really small and really efficient. But when you come to actually access anything, we'll have a look at that. It takes an age to do anything okay so it's super slow because it has to go and query and in our case we're querying a data flow which is again in the power bi service probably the slower side of what you could query you could be running something though on your local sql server via an enterprise gateway again that's going to be quite slow or you could be doing something within the azure suite itself so in a um, like an azure sql a data warehouse or that, but you're running in direct query mode and it's important that you understand that direct query mode is inherently slow. So there are row limits on it as well. So you can kind of, your queries can only really touch a million rows. Okay, and I'm saying your queries can touch because it's not necessarily the return itself. There's other things that go into it in terms of if you're returning loads and the processing is being done locally, you've got challenges that you need to think through. So you can have some of those, especially with the X functions that come through. So that's then where we start to say, well, we need to do aggregation so that we're far better equipped to actually tackle the issues that we're going to see, the challenges that we're going to face. And the most common aggregation that you'll do, really, this is kind of, yeah, 90% of them will be this way, is against the date table. Okay. Now, in the article that I wrote on LinkedIn, link down below, we talked about that you have a tiered structure potentially. So in our environment, we had a three tier structure. So we had tier one, which was actually gonna go and use in like the most recent period. So like the last three months, we would generally say. So you could for you, it could be four months, it could be six months, it could be one month, okay? But you'd think through what that is. It's a very specific point for you. But at that point, the aggregation goes down to a daily level. Okay, so you're saying, well, if it's daily, we're gonna do this. Okay? So you go through and you say, right, daily, daily, daily. Yeah, off we go. And it works that way by saying, right, so for this day, what were the total number of journeys? What was this? And then whatever else you choose to group it by. So in our own case, we're actually grouping by station as well. So we're going to have daily counts by station for the last three months or four months, I think that is, is where I've written it. Um, and that way you've got this really clear where we can actually go and see day by day what's happening. And it's much quicker because that's then brought through as an import into the data model. The challenge with that is you're in your semantic model or your semantic layer is around understanding that for all you've got that there, it is never, ever, ever going to be a source of truth. Your source of truth remains the original source. Okay. So we've got the daily for the three months. We could do a monthly version for, well, four months on. So in the past, properly historic, we have a monthly number. So what went on with month? And then if all else fails, go and use the raw table. So actually go and check what's happening. Now, the reasoning behind all this is the logic of the equation and the logic of the calculation is such that the assumption is going to be in the past, you're just going to look at the monthly level. And again, this is something that's dependent on you. If your business, you're just looking at the last quarter, that's fine. If you're looking at the last 12 months, that's fine too, but you're going to need to think about how far back it's going. And that will restructure then the switch statement that goes into the main measure calculations. Because what you really want is to have the thing saying, right, in this case, I'm going to do this. In this case, I'm going to do that. In this case, I'm going to do the other. Okay. And then you're running the actual, the actual sums or the actual calculations against each one of those, depending on which one it does. So transparently to the user, they're not aware of it. Now, performance wise, as long as you're using the aggregation tables, which, which are linked in, in terms of they're directly within the semantic model, they're going to be nice and quick and performant. As soon as you go through, which would be tend to be when you want to drill down deeper into what's actually happened with this station, what's actually happened here, it's going to take time. Okay, But really, because that's a user-generated action, 
it takes some time and people tend to accept. Especially if you're saying, well, to get a detailed station report, it might take you 10, 15 seconds versus what well, I have to send an email to, insert name here. They have to go and then generate a report and they have to then send me that detailed report back. So it's quicker, even if it takes 10, 15 seconds. Even if it takes a minute, it's still quicker. But, it's be, but with it being user-initiated, people tend to be more tolerant about delays. But we, we'll check and we'll see exactly what, we go, what goes on with it. So let's con over, let's see the challenge initially, and then let's see the solution that we've put in place for it, and then let's see that in action. Champion. So here we are, aren't we? This is our report that we've got written. And what we can see is if we were to say, well, actually, let's see this report page, if we filtered it to by Manhattan, if we click on it, we can see, bear in mind, nothing on this page is really below a monthly granularity. So this would be ideal for our fixed solution. You can see, I've clicked on it a few seconds ago, it's still slowly thinking through it, okay? It's not processed it yet. And this is what's going on with the direct query connection. It is incredibly slow when you need to do filtering actions or anything like that. The first load as well is slow. Okay? What you'll see though when this does come through is it does cache, right? So if you have to use a direct query connection and you have to present it to management, I would say kind of go through, click through the various things you're gonna to need to do just before your meeting. Caches in Power BI are an absolute nightmare in terms of their duration, in terms of the way they go. Generally, you might get about half an hour out of it though. So kind of be aware that it's never gonna be an ideal solution if you have to do that. So here we go, we've got Manhattan, we can click away and say back, but we can click back on Manhattan and it's quick. So it's cached the results. But this is where the problems start, isn't it? Because we say, oh, we're looking at Manhattan. Oh, well, what happened in 2024? Is Manhattan going well? We click on 2024. It slows down again. Okay. So we've got something that's just a real pain in the neck to work with. So what is the solution to it? And how do we get that to the next stage for this to work much better? Okay. So first off, let's go and have a look. Uh, this. So this is one of the aggregation tables that we've built. Okay, and we can see we've got a monthly from and a monthly to. So in terms of it made sense to do it, rather than trying to put it all as one table, we have a to and we have a from. Okay, so the, the report page we were looking at, that was going from, wasn't it? That was kind of where have you picked up bikes from. Okay, because it's started. So it's the starting, the origin station. Okay, so if we go in, we have a look, we can edit the table. You see, there's nothing really complicated happening in here. We've got the events table, which is our raw initial table that pulls all the data through. We've got the ID, which I've now put in from the SharePoint list that we've got everything linked through. And it's gonna come through and bring everything together. What we've done here is as a filter step. And I can't remember, can we zoom this in? Is it? There we go, we'll do that, okay. So you can see where we're saying where it's not in the last four months, okay? So it's kind of a not in, which that means in the other one we have is in the previous four months. So we're going last four months with this. Okay, so there's kind of a logic to it. That makes sense with your aggregation tables. You don't want a crossover, obviously. You want kind of a everything up to this point and everything after going the other way. And then, of course, we have the logic that will come through at the end. Okay, so let's go back, zoom out, move my cat here. Anyway. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to switch it to be month end. So we can see here, based on the filtered row, let's set the started up to be the end of month. So we're using the started up. To be honest, I'm using the start up for everything. In terms of the, the delivery to, we could say, well, let's use the ended up, you know, for the ones around midnight and that kind of thing. I've chosen to leave it at started up for now. I might change my mind and change it. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you'd rather see it changed. I think it's one of those where it's not going to make a huge deal of difference to it. In terms of what we would do here, we would just add a second step, which was pulling that. What we're doing in the daily is we're using the daily one. So we're bringing that to be, we're, well, it's already stripped out the days for it, hasn't it? So we're just using 
the day values, so we're grouping it by, so we don't have that step. Again, it's easy enough to do either one. Okay, so once we've got that, we're then taking the monthly from, and all we're doing in the monthly from is a group by. So if we click on here, let's zoom in on this. See, so we're grouping it by station, by the, the, the date, time it started, which is again, the end of month now. What the station name, is it a member or a casual? Because I think that's gonna be one of the ones we kind of really want to know, members versus casual over time. And then we've just got the ID from the SharePoint list. The idea being that I'd like to switch to using the ID fully, um, but we've left the name in because we were using that initially because the IDs were just not fully linked through, okay? And then lastly, we're just doing a count of hires. So how many rows have you got? Because there's a row for each hire. So it's, it's, there's nothing too bad happening in there, is there? Now, the net result of all this, if we come out of here, is if we look at the monthly ags here, look at the refresh history, you can see it takes seconds to build. You know, it's like under a minute to build that. So we've actually then suddenly got this table that we can use. Now, this is all happening in the Power Query site. In theory, you could have written this in DAX and have a DAX view doing something similar, okay? Because it's coming from direct query though, you might find that you hit issues at some point in the future with it, given that you might be returning just too many rows. Based on that, the row counts there, I don't think it would be, but this is something definitely try and push towards the power query side. But understanding what's going on and the availability of those tables is something to be aware of from a modeling perspective and from a DAX writing perspective for it. The L4 is the same. So if we look at that, the refresh history for that, again, like the last one, it's taking it a few seconds. It's not taking an age to build these. These are quick. These are able to be available and ready to be used quickly and easily within our Power BI model. So because they're available quickly and easily, then we just need to write the DAX statements, don't we? Okay, so let's go through and do that now. So first off, what I wanted to show you was this, okay? Now this is really kind of the impact of what it is that we've done. So the updated is obviously where we were using everything through, everything was coming through as was. And what we can see is that that comes in at two and a half megabytes. So it's not a huge, tiny, tiny one, 160 million rows. Two and a half meg, brilliant. Putting in our aggregation table, which is added in real terms, it's about a million and a half, 1.5 million rows of data into the model, but it's all compressed, it's all well, well structured, has pushed that up to seven megabytes, okay? So we're still in the point where we're kind of, this is good, this is comfortable. Okay? We've got something that we can use, we can work with for that. How does that look in Power BI though, is the question. So what I've done is I've built three views, and this is again, one of the things we always recommend that you do, or I always recommend you do, is add some views here because the default all table view just is cluttered and everything's in there. Build views, I say at least one per fact table that you've got in there because you'll want to structure those out. You may need to do them around dimensions where you've got sub dimensions as well, but one per fact table is kind of a rough idea. What you want to get to is something that's simple enough to understand and easy. So what we've got here, let me just move this up so we can see it on the zoomed in view is we've got there are events, links to our calendars. So I've got two relationships in the calendars in the station. So at the moment, this new station ID going to the end state, the end station, but it's a passive relationship. So at some point we could do this and put these in again. We might do the same with the dates. So the dates all working as well. What we've also then got, let me zoom out here, is we've got a daily and a monthly version. So we can see the daily and the monthly, how those all link together. So again, at a glance, I could come in and say, right, what's happening here? And if I needed to do documentation on this or something like that, I could quickly grab a screen grab from there, put it into my, Power, into my PowerPoint for my management team or into my Word document, whatever it is I'm doing the documentation in. But we've got a clear structure. Next time we come in again, if we wanna make changes to it, we can do it in the old tables. But I think you'll see, even with this pretty simple model, the all table view is already getting a little on the, this is gonna be difficult to manage, okay? What I want to touch on as well, 
we've got an aggregation capability within events here, so you can add aggregations here. Be careful is all I'll say with this, right? You might find this works fine for you. You might find it doesn't. It's one of those that it depends on the data source, depends on what you're doing, it depends on the granularity that you're trying to push through into your aggregations. But fundamentally, this will try and bring stuff into the model that will replicate largely what we're doing here. But I want to do what we're doing here so you can see it and work through that in your mind before you start tinkering with the automatic in case you're not fully understanding what's going on. So what we're looking to do here today is say, right, our bike hires, what we need it to do is to think through the logic of, should I use the monthly aggregation, the daily, or do I have to actually go and get the detail view? Okay, so this is where we get some fun DAX going on. So we're going to rewrite bike hires. So we know we've got the count rows of events. Okay, so that's almost going to become kind of our last clause, isn't it? Kind of like that end goal. So what we're going to do is we have to write a replacement, aren't we, for this bike hires first off. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, though, is we need to actually define where do we switch between our aggregation tables. So the easiest way to do this, this is the simplest way, is we know that the L42 and from are there. So what we can do is we can say, let's go, let's create a new measure here. Okay. And this is going to be um, uh, yeah, min daily. Actually, let's expand that so we can actually see what we're writing. Expand it properly. There we go. Min daily equals, let's go with the min of say the L4 started. Okay, so we want the first, what's the earliest date that we've got? Okay, and if we come through, let's pick a new page, we can bring that through min daily, we've got a value, okay? So it's, this has a value in it, we know this is gonna be there. So what we can now do is we can say, well, if the value is that or greater, use the daily, if it's that or less, use the monthly, okay? So what we do here then, is if we come through here, let's expand this down now. So bike hires equals, so VAR. Um, do an underscore test, so I don't know. Min date equals min daily. Oops, sorry, not min daily, does it? No, that should be calendar. Yeah, min. So what's the context for it? That's what we want to do, isn't it? Because we want to be able to compare the two together. Sorry, my mind's all over the place. Okay, so we've got something that we can now compare the two against. Next, I'm going to do what we do, like, to use equals so which aggregation are we going to use okay so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a switch statement so switch open brackets true okay now this is a common way of doing it. so this is all which one's true okay so which one of these statements is true okay so firstly what we're going to compare is let's bring this through to here Min date is greater than or equal to, there we go, there we go. Min date is greater than or equal to min daily. Okay, so if it's greater than or equal to that, let's give that an arbitrary value of one. Okay. Oh, stop with it, I'm trying to do these things. We've gone down the line, there we go. Right. The next thing we're going to do is, is filtered, okay. So, or the opposite, so not is filtered dates. Okay, so what we're saying here is we haven't filtered by dates. Okay, in theory, what you could do here as well is we could do not is filtered if you had weeks or other granularity that we we're using regularly. You could add additional clauses like this and put them all going through into two, or you could use like the double pipes for an all for it, okay, but two. 
Okay. Otherwise, and the final one is zero. And then we're going to close it. Did I put zero? Okay. So we've got zero, one, two. Those are the options that this switch state will come back with. What we can do is we can say let's oh, into here. We can say let's return. Comment that out for now. Let's return back to use. Okay, so we've got here. So what we can see is if we go in here, we've got a two because we're going further down than there. If we went through and we put in, and then what we want to have is a filter on years. Let's put the filter, let's put the years on. That's great there, it's 2024, that's fine. No, we just want it to be is 2024, don't we? Apply that filter, and then let's put in months. Okay, so stupidly, when I normally do this, we, we set up a few measures in a separate table to do it. But because this was going through as a calculation at the time, it was obviously updating the context. So here we go, so we've now got this. So we've got a definite changeover happening. Okay, what I did was I used where we've got all selected. So what's the full context of the selection rather than the context actually running in at the time? Context is another thing we have to remember and that's just me being dumb and getting that wrong or missing it temporarily. So we've got this now. So the measures and the logic is working here. So now what we need to do is we see to say, right, so which one are we gonna use? Okay, so the way we do this is we bring through, let's bring in another variable. Okay, and this is one of these things that there's a lot of talk about how best to do these. Okay, and I come through with these as de various different ones. So here we go, VAR hired count equals, I've missed the bracket, that's why it's going wrong. There we go, right. Okay, so start with a switch again. Switch, true, comma. Okay, so add to use equals one. So if it's, a, if it's daily, what we're gonna do is we're gonna count, so we're gonna say sum of, and it is the L4 from highest, okay? Add to use equals two. We're going to do sum of monthly from hires. Ag to use equals zero. We're going to use this, aren't we? Count rows events. Otherwise, and this is when we have just a nice one, just as a bit of a catch-all. So otherwise would be blank, and then we're gonna close up. Okay, and then what we want to return is hired count. Okay, so we've actually built this really quickly and quite easily, and the logic that goes into it, you could use anywhere. Okay, so if we bring this, if we close this now, what we should see is we've suddenly got high accounts as to what's going on across the periods. Okay, so we need to put this in this way. Okay, so we've started to build this up. So we've got 10 million hires across the period and transparently remember behind the scenes, this is switching. So here we are, we're way back here. We can hit refresh on this, just to make sure everything's there. And now what we can do is we can say, well, let's actually see what's going on in any particular location. So we can see quickly and easily everything updates now. Okay, this is now not going through and doing a direct query connection to work out where these stations are, where everything is. Okay, so it's a much easier, much quicker way to get everything to run. And this is the benefit that we get from the aggregation tables. So what do you reckon then? Okay, Aggregations are something that you need to understand what's going on because 
one of the things that you'll find time and again within Power BI is a requirement for you to piece together tables, right? And building tables either dynamically within DAX, so within a DAX query, so using variables like we've kind of used today. Um, we haven't written a variable that includes any sort of a table function to it. But I hope you could see that in theory, we might have a requirement for each of those different aggregations to be running against, um, say, an X function or the like. Okay, So we can actually get to that point. And that's quite a common step that you'll get to is where your aggregations will go through and then you'll do, get me that, piece those all together. That's something that happens an awful lot when you're doing this. But what we've also shown you is the ability that actually transparently switches between doing a daily and a monthly or even going into a native direct query connection to see, well, which one do I need to use? All of that will happen transparently behind the scenes. You don't need to be involved in it. You don't even have to get heavily be aware that it's going on. But it's important that you get to that point where you go, right, I understand what is happening now. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I know there's an awful lot in there in terms of the way the DAX works. One of the things we're going to go back through in the next week is we'll talk a lot more, I think, about context, because context is one of those things that's really important to understand from a whole aggregation function piece. DAX in itself, the whole Power BI side, context is where it trips everyone up the most. Okay, so time and again, we see context being the issue. You saw for me where I went, uh, just use this. And the context that I was using the measure in was different to where I would normally use it. So as I say, normally we would create like some of these functions, especially when we're doing these kind of things, we would have support tables is what I tend to call it, like a support table doing some core count rows against things that we can then export or set alerts against. Okay. And instead of those being calculated, we tend to just draw those straight through. So there's, those would tend to either be like a calculated column that you might do um, with a name and something like that. Just again, just so that they're there and they never change values, either like locked values. So you might have like your last refresh date time, one of those ones that you kind of want to put in there. Um, those are things that we can do with that. So it's kind of, it's worth being aware of, it's worth thinking about, is that something I want to do? Or is that not something I'm interested in? But it's all there and it's able to be done. Okay. As always, if you think some of that DAX was well worth it and you think, yeah, I want to know more, I want to do more, get in touch. The email is down below, office at geordieconsulting.co.uk. We'd love to help you push your models to the next level. For now though, stay safe, take care. Ta-da. <laughs>